You're watching UNICEF Television. The seats of Rwanda's parliament are not normally filled by children. But over 500 children gathered for the 7th National Children's Summit to make recommendations on how to make Rwanda a better place for all children known to the country's policy makers. This time, and live via social media for those who couldn't be there, they discussed how national development planning needs to take into account the views of every child, including the most vulnerable, through a specific focus on equity. <laughs> We are very happy as children with disabilities to attend this meeting because during the last meetings we were not invited, so we were excluded. So being here is also very important to us and it makes us very happy because we are included in the Rwandan society and that we are also valued. In the lead-up to the summit, thousands of children, including orphans, refugees, and children living with disabilities, took part in pre-summit consultations held across the country. For nine-year-old Klenia Umohoza, who has lost both her parents, this was an opportunity to tell her story and express her hopes for the future. I found this meeting quite interesting because it focuses on the most vulnerable children. These children are like me. As I don't have parents, I was lucky enough to have an auntie who took care of me. I wish all vulnerable children can have the same kind of care. From these meetings, children put forward recommendations to ministers, governors and mayors at the summit. Top of the list was the need to include children living with disabilities in all forums and improve services for them. As well as better social protection for vulnerable children, the right for all children to grow up in a family environment, eliminating malnutrition and making sports and electricity available in all schools. These are to be included in the country's new economic development and poverty reduction strategy. It's been an extraordinary experience, a really unique forum for children to express their views. I think the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is alive and well here in Rwanda, particularly the Article 12 on the ability to express yourself on matters that affect you, but also looking at all of the different articles of the Convention, making sure that the rights of children are respected, protected and fulfilled. Rwanda is on track to meet seven of eight Millennium Development Goals but close to 60% of people still live below $1 a day. This country also has one of the world's youngest populations. So to continue the momentum of success already made, it's vital to ensure all children are active in the development of their country. While these youngsters are certainly happy their voices are being heard, they want results. And with a firm commitment made by the Prime Minister himself to address their needs, that's exactly what they hope to get. So in a way, the recommendations that come out of the summit will be binding to the policymakers, and definitely they will be included in the EDPRS process. It may be a while still before some of these children return to this hall as the country's leaders, but it's clear that they won't have to wait until then to take part in the decisions that help determine their future. This is Suzanne Bukas reporting for UNICEF Television. For more information, go to unicef.org. Unite for Children.